Just a little bit about Miami-Dade. Miami-Dade County is a county of 2.7 million. We are a minority county. 65% uh, of our population is Hispanic. We have 22 subpopulations of Hispanics living in Miami-Dade. The next big group of, 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 of community or, or population that we have are Haitians. Uh, the group has stabilized at around 100,000. It hasn't grown that much. Uh, Miami is definitely a city uh, that has, is considered the crossroads of America, that why my title, it has that name. It's also called as the gateway of the Americas because many people come from all around the world to Miami because of our uh, international airport that it's uh, extremely busy. Sometimes it could be first and sometimes it could be second in terms of the traffic that comes from all around the world. And then we have one of the biggest ports uh, in terms of uh, the cruise ship industry that come from all around the world. We have close to 20 million visitors a year that come through uh, Miami. Um, as you know, um, the 22 subpopulations that compose uh, the population comes mostly from the Caribbean and Central America and South America. So that's a little bit about Miami. Um, whoever, you know, in large cities, um, and urban cities, and I guess Chrissy will be talking more about that, uh, it presents a host of dangers, obviously, and threats. It's because of the population of where you sit globally. Um, it has to do with the traffic, uh, the, the, the markets, uh, the imports. Uh, all of that produces threats and a host of dangers that we have to deal with. If there's one message I want you to take from my presentation today, is that the work that needs to be done in order to be prepared in a large urban city, it boils down to collaboration. That's what it boils down to. It doesn't boil down to more than that because not one agency has all the money to deal with all of these threats. We have to be very, very sure that we understand that uh, working with your sister agencies, and we found this out very, very quickly, um, our tipping point was during Hurricane Andrew in 1992. I was there working at the health department. I worked there for 28 years, and the tipping point for us was Hurricane Andrew. We knew that that, that event turned our, our mission at the health department around, and it turned the mission around for the county, for the fire departments, for the police departments, and for every single first responder, and every single nonprofit organization. It just turned it around. We knew that from, then, uh, from there, we needed uh, to change the way we did business. It's all about collaboration, it's all about relationships, and it's all about planning, making sure that you plan constantly, that you practice together, that you know each other's names, that you're able to communicate with each other, and put people on speed dial that have to be on speed dial. Because if not, and if an event like this happens, um, like Andrew again in Miami, and let's say it happens, it comes in, instead of coming down through the south of the county where it wasn't that populated, it comes in through Miami Beach, you know that the first 72 hours you're on your own and you really have to have good relationships in place, good processes in place, good planning in place in order to respond uh, to that. The next uh, turning point for us was 9-11. Uh, and let me just show you very quickly what happened. Um, after 9-11, and shortly after that, how many of you remember the anthrax attacks in Palm Beach? It was the first bioterrorism attack and the first person to die of a bioterrorist th uh, uh, threat um, uh, in, 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 in the United States. So it was important for us uh, and the governor at that time, Jeb Bush, to put something solid in place that will be a statewide response system. And so they created what was called the Regional Domestic Security Task Force. So it includes uh, many, many um, aspects, including the FBI, including law enforcement, and many other aspects uh, to make this, uh, the state stronger. The other thing, um, and uh, by the way, they regionalized the task force. So now uh, in, my, in the region, which is 33% of the state, it includes Palm Beach, Broward, Miami-Dade, Monroe, and uh, seven other regions. And as you see here, uh, another thing that we did was uh, create coalitions. 
So statewide collisions were created in order for us to make sure that we were able to meet. And the members, uh, the more inclusive, the better we are. Uh, definitely, uh, it's something. How much more time do I have? I think I have. Okay. So healthcare collisions, the formal collaboration amongst the organization is extremely, extremely important. That's where we get down to the nitty gritty of who's going to do what. Uh, what, what are your names? Where can I get you? What's going to happen if something does come? And make agreements. The most important thing that we have are called memorandums of understanding, contracts. We make sure that we coordinate with all of the agencies in the community. Uh, before um, uh, Andrew, what we had was uh, you know, handshake agreements, so, okay, you're going to provide us oxygen, you're going to provide us this, you're going to provide us that. No, you have to formalize these agreements. You have to make sure that all of you are not using the same oxygen company. You have to make sure that all of you are not using the same place where you're going to uh, provide respite to the assisted living facilities and the nursing homes. And you have to make sure that your emergency operations center is... Um, you know, well functioning. I'm not going to go through all the things that I'm going to, I'm just going to go very, very quickly um, uh, through, uh, we went through Ebola, we went through Zika. You could then, when you look at your slides, you could see all the things that were done and you could get the details there. Um, I just wanted to go a little bit uh, to media. Uh, so you could see uh, definitely, in terms of media, um, for me uh, and for most of us, when we had Hurricane Andrew, social media did not exist, right? It's new. But whoever want, wants to be successful in managing any type of event, any type of event, you better be a master at social media. And your community better understand how social media is handled. It's very, very important. Uh, Sandy... Uh, in New York City, a great example of how social media was handled to deal with uh, Hurricane Sandy in New York City. But we need to be masters at this. And there needs to be one voice. Because people, especially now with this whole fake news business, you could really upset a community with, with this. And it's happening in the Bahamas new, now with this response. That's why it's so important. Whoever is suffering the event, the social media, all of it needs to be really mastered, and it needs to be one voice. Uh, the worst thing that could happen to any health officer in the United States of America was what happened to me, that I had a novel virus of Zika, right? First in the United States, we knew nothing about the virus, come to my community, right? We're trying to break the chain of transmission, and we have a campaign a presidential campaign, a mayoral campaign, and a commissioner campaign going on at the same time. That was a nightmare. That was a nightmare because I had to deal with every single politician coming into my community, me, myself being an incident commander, right, having to deal with, with visits, with different visits, and people putting out bro, uh, brochures, campaign brochures, with the mosquitoes on the front page or you know, sending them to the different houses with different messages. So as you see, it wasn't easy. Uh, that little medication that was there, one of the mayoral uh, candidates said that he had a cure for Zika. So he bought everybody pressed together that he, was, he had this medication. Uh, you know, what it was, it was an ointment for uh, itching. That's what it was. it was, that's all it was. <laughs> So I had to go out there and I had to tell him, you know, you stop and desist of doing this. If not, I'm, I'm, you know, you're going to be in trouble. So he called off the press conference. Uh, we stopped that in its tracks. But those were the things that I had to deal with. That's just a, a moment of, um, you know, lessons learned. Sometimes it rains, sometimes it pours. What can you say? And then the hurricanes, uh, obviously, uh, very shortly after that, we did get Irma. So no respite. Uh, Ebola, Zika, Irma right after it, uh, and then came Maria. We also uh, provided tremendous amount of support for Maria for the Virgin Islands and uh, Puerto Rico. We took care of the majority of the patients that came for renal, uh, for renal uh, uh, care, 
a dialysis because on the islands they were devastated. I imagine right now in the Bahamas, that's one of the biggest issues, the renal patients that need to be on dialysis. So we had to take care of those. We opened uh, different spots at the airport and throughout the community to take care of folks. Uh, we took care of approximately 30, 33,000 uh, people who came from Virgin Islands and uh, Puerto Rico to make sure that they were going in the right direction. They came off the planes disoriented, didn't know anything about Miami, didn't know where they were going, didn't know what they were doing, so the health department provided all of that support together with all of the partners and the governor of the state of Florida at that time. Uh, and of course, uh, what do we do, right? Uh, the rest of the time, we have to make sure that we have a solid program of preparedness. I remember in the initial days before Andrew, our environmental uh, program used to take care of all of the issues related to preparedness. Very tiny, very tiny effort. Yes, an effort, but very tiny. But now we have a program that's comprehensive and all hazards approach. And just uh, some final thoughts. I leave you with this, that disaster preparedness uh, is not simply a coastal city issue, but it's also a national issue. We must also lean on one another for innovative ideas and solutions that paint a brighter future for our country and our most vulnerable populations. Local elected officials must take leadership roles in shifting attitudes and actions for proper infrastructure and social investments. So with that, I leave you. Thank you so much.